It's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hi and welcome once again. This is Reflections, a 15-minute broadcast designed to bless, inspire, and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, here is your invitation to make that important decision as soon as possible. Make the adequate preparation that your soul is in the right place with God, that your life is reflecting a walk of obedience with the Lord or obedience to the Lord, and that you're doing all that God says that you should do and walking in the way he would have you to walk, to live your life. So I've been sharing for the past two Wednesdays about Noah and the ark, and we're talking about uh, what I consider to be an important subject, and that is keep building your ark. Keep building your ark. God said he's going to destroy the earth by flood, is what he spoke to Noah, because the world had become so wicked, uh, so violent. And God says, I'm going to wipe it all out and start fresh with you and your family and with um, adequate animals and birds and so on. But I'm going to destroy my creation. And so God told him to build this ark, build this massive, massive boat that would be um, uh, fully covered, uh, would have ventilation in the top and so on, and uh, just to prepare himself for what he was about to do. And that was send rain for 40 days and 40 nights and destroy the earth by flood. So the scripture tells us that Noah did exactly everything that God commanded him to do. And that is my encouragement to you always that you walk in obedience to God, to God's word, and do whatever he tells you to do, and everything is going to be all right. That's how I ended last week. So I, I pick it up. I just want to just read a couple of verses, chapter 7, verse 1, which I read last week. When everything was ready, God said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family uh, from the people, of, from among all the people of the earth. I can see you are alone. You alone are righteous. Um, take birds and animals and so on um, and then he said seven days from now I will make the rains pour down on the earth and it will rain 40 days 40 nights until I wipe from the earth all the living things I have created and verse 5 tells us Noah did everything as the Lord had commanded him if you've not uh, watched the previous two broadcasts in this regard I want to encourage you to do so you can find them on my Facebook page or on my YouTube channel they are there for you so we talked about uh, God requiring obedience which we personal practical and faith God required patience of Noah and his family and the animals as well uh, that very often when God speaks to us or tells us to do something whether it's something written in the God's Word or otherwise it will be uh, somewhat of an inconvenience to us when we talked about what it would have been like uh, being cooped up in, in an ark. I don't know how tight the spaces were, uh, but being being cooped up in an ark for uh, over a year, it must have been extremely difficult and, of course, extremely inconvenient for all of them. I didn't mention it last week, but when you, well, he, he said to leave, you know, a space around the top of the ark for ventilation, ventilation, the reality is that most of the ark would have been fully enclosed and sealed so there was no exchange of air in terms of the ark itself but just that uh, i think it was an 18 inch space at, at the top uh, under the eaves of the of the ark so when the rain fell it wouldn't come in but air could go out and air could come in um but i, I can tell you this uh, i grew up on a farm and uh, listen that ark did not smell good, right? It was it was not pleasant. Uh, you got all them animals in there, all of them producing waste, all of them producing methane gas, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, it was not a pleasant environment to be in. And, and then to be in it, I'm sure that many of them, like I would have, was like, God, come on. Uh, that's enough. That's, that's enough. We, we need to get out and get some fresh air. Let, let this thing stop because... We can't, we can't deal with this anymore. I'm sure there were many days like that, but God kept them in there for over a year. That is a long time. I talked a bit about trials that we go through, and as we are maturing in the Lord, our trials seem to become not just longer, 
but more severe. And I, I mentioned in a broadcast recently that uh, God is preparing us for what is coming uh, on the earth and what is coming our way. We need to be uh, exercised. We need to be uh, matured. We need to be ready to deal with. Or, as I mentioned in a different point, we need to make adequate preparation. So God is preparing us from His part, but we have to do our part to prepare ourselves. Uh, if you want to have strength in your body, you need to eat food, but you make the decision as to what food you will eat. There are a lot of obese people. Uh, Barbados has a couple of weeks ago been dealing with the fight against obesity. Uh, certain parts of the world are well known for obesity. Um, but you know that the choice in what you put into your body and what you do with your body in terms of exercise and rest and dealing with stress and so on, it's your choice. It's my choice. It's our choice. God does not tell us to eat this or eat that. We decide how we will nourish our bodies. Uh, I thank God for my wife, something I've done many times and do consistently, because my wife makes sure that I get healthy stuff. Uh, I've cut down on the sweets. I love sweets. Anything sweet I like, except drink. I don't like sweet drink, but I love sweets, chocolate, ice cream, cake pastries, anything that I just absolutely love. But I've cut down my sweets because as I'm getting older, uh, I got a birthday coming up, a big milestone on July 14th. And I, I, I realized, you know, you can't just continue as you have been going. You have to make some changes. That is my choice. That is your choice, all right? And then there's all these things that, that happen in your body as you are aging, prostate and all kinds of stuff. For the men, not the ladies. All right. So uh, let's moving on again. While, while there was inconvenience and while there will be inconvenience for us as we seek to be obedient to God's word, um, this, this other point, again, is, is practical, but I, I want to bring it to your attention. The Bible does not say, even though there are some preachers that say, but the Bible does not say that um, people made fun of Noah. What it does say is that the people were wicked. What it does say is that the people rejected Noah, rejected Noah's message. They, they didn't think that what he was doing was made any sense. It wasn't very smart. It's very likely that people passed by and laughed, you know, for him to see, for his children to see. It is possible that some came up to him and said, Hey, hey Noah, my, was, this, was this a building here? Uh, are you a bit a bit far from the from the the ocean? Um, um, were you were you expecting a flood? Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that it's very very likely that people made fun of Noah. You know, sometimes people can communicate a message without saying a word, just the way they look at you, just the 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 what what shows in their eyes. They don't say a word, but you can you can tell that they think you're being stupid. Beloved, look, when we live for the Lord, the world thinks it is stupid. They think it's dumb. When you go even beyond that, not just living for the Lord, but then walking in obedience to what God's Word says, people think we're dumb. Um, but this Word is intended to encourage you today, not, not to worry about what people think, but just to do what is right. Keep building your art. Keep walking in obedience to God's revealed will, to God's purposes in your life. And, and while it may be inconvenient for you, it may be taking too long, uh, you may not be growing at the rate that you think you should grow at, and maybe there, there's a little embarrassment somewhere along the line. You know, your friends can do X, Y, Z, especially if you're a young person. All, all of my friends doing it, but I'm not allowed to do it because I'm trying to be a Christian. Listen, this is a good thing, and, and I want to strengthen you in that. People in your workplace are you know, they're going to fets and parties and so on, and, and you, you, you don't live that kind of a life. It's not easy to do that. But at the end of the day, while it may seem a little, a little embarrassing, a little tough, a little rough on you, don't, don't cave in. Don't, don't, don't give in to, to the pressure that they put on you, or even by what they don't say to you. 
you keep doing what is right. You keep walking in obedience to God's word, to God's will, to God's plan, to God's purpose. And regardless of what people think and regardless of what people say, everything is going to work out for his glory. And I'm going to show you that as I come to the conclusion of this message from Genesis 6 and 7. Well, other chapters are evolved, but I, I just focused in on these two. So, the Bible doesn't say precisely, um, but as I said, we can reasonably assume that people made fun of Noah and his family. But here's what I want to say to you as we have the last five minutes. The results. The results of building this ark. The results of doing what God told you to do. What happened for Noah and his family is that they received salvation not salvation as we understand in the new testament but they were saved from destruction noah noah and his entire family i don't know if anybody had any children on the ark but noah and his entire family were saved from destruction because he built an ark because he responded in obedience to what god told him and he and his family were saved. As a matter of fact, let me go a step further in talking about the result of his obedience. Here's this. God used Noah to literally save the entire human race and animal species. Can you imagine that? One man's obedience because God trusted him and because he responded in faith and did what God told him, he saved the, none of us would be here if Noah didn't do what he did. He saved the entire human race. And that is absolutely phenomenal when you stop and think about it because of his obedience. He has left a legacy of obedience for all to follow. So he actually didn't just save us, but he left an example for us to follow. And the same way that the scripture said, and I'm going to read it again specifically, precisely. So Noah did everything as the Lord commanded him. That is what he expects of us. And that's what he modeled for us to do everything exactly as the Lord had commanded him. Don't cut corners with God. Don't cut corners with the word of God. Do everything that God has commanded us and you to do as children of the living God. So listen, keep building your ark this is being spiritualized but you understand where i'm coming from keep building your ark keep responding in obedience to what god has told you when you pick up the bible what the, what the word of god says this is what you see there as an example it doesn't matter if people around you in your church are doing it or not you do what god tells you to do in his written word but also beyond that, God will speak to you and he will tell you to do certain things. And you may be wrong sometimes. You, you will miss it. You'll get it wrong sometimes. But I want you to step out in faith on what you believe. This is what I do. Every time I stand to, to minister, whether it be an online church with Pastor D or, or on Reflections, I am responding by faith to what I believe God has told me to do. And it's not easy sometimes to do that. And yes, there have been some major inconveniences that I've had to deal with. But you know, at the end of the day, I am, I am so glad that I did the right thing. Because the rewards, and, and this is how I'm ending this broadcast, the rewards are phenomenal. But you may have to go for quite a time before you see or experience those rewards and this message is to encourage you to keep building the art even if you don't see the rewards if all you are experiencing right now is inconvenience and maybe a little embarrassment because you're trying to do the right thing and people are laughing at you and make him Bajan saying mock sport of you be obedient to his word to his written word to his spoken word um and to when it says spoken word in this case i'm talking about what people like me say when you hear preachers and, and they preach the word of God, this is not, this is not some of you are reading, this is some of you are hearing. 
Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So be obedient to the written word, be obedient to the preached word, that's a better way to put it, and then be obedient to what God says to your spirit. Whether you understand it, whether you like it, whether you agree with it or not, it's not of consequence. Do what God tells you to do. Build your ark. And when God says no, the whole world literally will open up for you. God's blessing will rain down upon you like you have never experienced before. In between, God will send a, a little ray of sunlight. I love to talk about that, but a, a little blessing in between just to keep you going and encourage you. But there's something big coming your way. Keep building your heart. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep walking in obedience and let God do what He wants to do. It is the best thing you'll ever do with your entire life. Don't miss out on the goodness of God and the blessing of God. Thank you for being a part of this three-week uh, study and teaching on uh, build, continue, keep building your ark. And I will see you next week Wednesday with another message. God bless you.